Welcome to the Vitruvian Man podcast. This is your host, Vinamrit Kasana. Today with me is my first guest, my good friend, John Arciero. Um, How are you? John is a health sciences major from BU, just graduated. Um, I bring in John today because he does something really interesting, something uh, not a lot of people do today, and that's he's a classical bodybuilder. <laughs> Could you tell us more about that, how, how that's different from like general bodybuilding? Well, general bodybuilding, first of all, the, the public kind of hates it. Like they, they just see these kind of veiny freaks and yeah. it's, it's, it's such a small subculture and it's kind of seen as gross. But I mean, that connects to why I even got into bodybuilding because I love lifting weights and everything like that. And I saw the bodybuilders of date of you know, days past. Such as, like, the one can, I can think of is Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's a great example of a classical bodybuilder. Right. Right? So, but even prior to him, there were guys bodybuilding, and they weren't quite as big as him, but yeah. they had kind of a more of a brawny look. It's definitely a look that's more um, accessible to the public. I see. And that's what really, like, made it appealing to me. So when you say accessible, do you mean that contemporary bodybuilding is not... Yeah, I, I would say it's not. If you look at who won Mr. Olympia this year, or if you look at Phil Heath, he I don't know if you know who that is, or maybe the viewers know, um, but bodybuilding now is just a game of how big can you get yeah. with, you know, verge of death, low levels of body fat, and you're dehydrated, and right. all the guys up there, they look... You know, it's a, it's a fantastic accomplishment, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm a fan of bodybuilding, right. so, so I still watch it, but... It's 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 a it's a gross kind of mutant look, but if you look at the guys from days past, like the first Mister Olympia, yeah. Larry Scott, he's not as dry, he's not as crazy veiny and cut and everything, but he's big and he's got big balloon biceps and it's a very like it, it's very accessible in, in the sense that the average person could look at him and would not be grossed out. I see. They'd be like, oh, you know, that's a strong dude. That's a good looking dude. You know, but nowadays you, you, you look at a bodybuilder, you know, at the beach or in public. The first thing that comes to my head is roid monkey. Yeah, roid you're monkey just like avoid. steroids. Yeah. Because yeah. he's he's so big, his lats are, you yeah. know, he, it, it he can't even put his like, arms like, down. It almost looks like an alien walking on earth. Exactly. I, I mean no disrespect to people who do it, but I just mean that. Me neither. It's, uh, so, so, um, it's interesting. So, so classical bodybuilding mm -hmm. is, is how much of it is different from, say, Conventional bodybuilding, like like when I say conventional bodybuilding, I mean like, as to the layman, uh, mm -hmm. bodybuilding comes in a variety of forms. One mm -hmm. of them is like you know, programs to like thirty days to get abs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Get a chisel, lean body, which mm -hmm. is which is the standard uh, narrative that exists. Like get a chisel, lean body, get a good butt, mm -hmm. right? It's all spe uh, focused on specifics. It it focuses toward uh, towards a more lean yeah. body. Yeah. So how how's classical bodybuilding from that uh, different from that? So, there were guys that looked lean in the class. So, classical bodybuilding, it's kind of, it's, it's, defining it is kind of difficult. I see. For me, I, I, I use the term old school bodybuilding and classical bodybuilding kind of interchangeably. Right. So, the lean body as opposed to like the muscled body, the difference there is really, you know, is in the how you're training. Yeah. And how much you're eating. You know, I, I train, I, I want to get as big as I can get. You know, mm -hmm. naturally, because as a natural, you know, you know you're never going to look crazy big. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm okay with trying to push that envelope. Yeah. Um, but the lean, the lean body seems to be more in nowadays. Like yeah. girls see like Cristiano Ronaldo and they're yeah. like, oh. Brad Pitt from Fight Club is another one. It, but as a, as a person involved in bodybuilding, you analyze his physique and you're yeah. like, he looks kind of scrawny, you know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. So it's like, it's all of this is so subjective. Bodybuilding in general, some people might like how the guys look today. Right. Some some real crazy people might even be attracted to it. But um, uh, myself personally, I, I, I like the, the brawny kind of muscled man. Yeah. I, I like embodying that kind of archetype. You, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting that you say that because like, with this podcast also, like, the Vitruvian Man is basically, I mean, for people who don't know it, the Vitruvian Man was a drawing made by Da Vinci in 19, uh, 1490, and he made it in, in, in the semblance of the idea that the ideal man has just the right amount of proportions, mm -hmm. so if you understand 
the proportions of man, you can understand the universe. You know, mm-hmm. it was based on that. And one of the things I read in your post was like how, um, like I went all the way back and I checked it out. It's like uh, classical bodybuilding has a certain kind of uh, shoulder to, mm-hmm. to waist mm-hmm. ratio, like to, to look a certain way. And I think I think you borrow it from um, Gretchen ideals, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. like, like because I, I, I've seen a lot of pictures of uh, Aristotle, Marcus mm-hmm. Aurelius, mm-hmm. all of these are like Stoics philosophers, but they're incredibly fit guys. Very fit, yeah. And I'm like, how does that happen? And I remember right. that quote by Aristotle, like, it was something along the lines of, I think we discussed this, um, if you don't build your body to its most natural yeah. beauty, I don't know. Like, it's, be- um, oh man, oh, no man has the right to be an amateur in the matter of physical development. That, that, that's what he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, something to that effect. And it's true, you can't neglect the body. Um, you can spend all day, I mean, this is my opinion, you can spend all day meditating, um, but there's a reason why a lot of spiritual practices incorporate the body. Like, look at yoga, right? Absolutely, yeah. There's there's something about connecting with your body and connecting with your muscles and, and really feeling that kind of energy and life force through you. It's, 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 it's inherently spiritual. So I, I, I think if, if you're only doing the mind and you're only kind of focusing on your mental environment, you overlook some, some different doors that could be unlocked, um, I, I guess, in your potential. That's really fascinating because I remember when I first talked to you about uh, this this concept of uh, you know just being inside your body because I know we both follow Eckhart Tolle in that sense. Uh, one of the things you recommended to me was uh, to basically feel your muscles when you work out. Mm-hmm. And, and I... Ever since that day, I have actively, whatever I do, I try to be inside my muscles. And I'm yeah. like, wow, like, it Changes makes sense. Everything. Like, you live all of your life in this narrow frame. And in you don't frame. even, like, see what's happening. Mm-hmm. And it's so interesting because as a result, as life goes on, all of this sags down. All of this, like, wears down by age. And you're like, fuck. And then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, at 70, you're like... Well, my body is giving away. That's literally mm-hmm. what people say. My mm-hmm. body is giving away. Mm-hmm. I still have my mind, but my body is giving away. Right. My body is failing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my body is failing. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Um, but so, so I'm really curious about this. How did you venture into bodybuilding in the first place? Like, was this something that happened when you were growing up or like? No, actually, I, I, I probably hold, held the opinion that most of the public holds about it, which is that it, like I said, it's a freaky subculture. Yeah. I just was like, eh, I like being in the gym. I like lifting weights. Um, but bodybuilding, there's nothing, you know, I didn't really feel any like, eh, you know, so like I would see the Olympians like Jay Cutler and people like that on Instagram who I'd follow. And I'd be like, wow, they, they, they're huge, but I don't want to look like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I think the, so what kind of got me into it? was I had been messing around in the gym for a little while before I had done P90X, which is like an at-home fitness uh, program. That's for abs, right? It's for it's for the whole thing, but they have a really good ab workout. Yeah, they have yeah. a really good ab workout. Um, so I used to do P90X, and I loved how I felt. And my, my idea was kind of like just fitness-related. It wasn't really about uh, developing muscles. It was just, right. you know, uh, fitness-related. And I was my, my idea then, and it still is to this day, is that as long as I can get a good workout in at the beginning of the day and expend energy and yeah. kind of use my power, that's that's like a win for the day. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Especially if you start your way, your day that way, you like no matter what happens the rest of the day, it's like I, I have a win to look back on. Hundred percent. There's yeah. this guy called Aubrey Marcus. I don't know if you know about him. Yeah. You know about him, right? Yeah. So he's uh, he's the CEO of On It Supplements, and I actually uh, ended up reading this book. It's called Own the Day, Own Your Life. Yeah. Before this, I used to follow like a bun- bunch of different morning routines, right? You know, do this, do that. But most of them would be sedentary. Like yeah. I, I would be, I would wake up, you know, I would meditate. I would write in my journal, mm-hmm. but not a lot of physical work. So, and then my gym time or my fitness time would happen three to four hours later after mm-hmm. I'd woken up, right? So, so I, I started following that. And he says, all you got to do is three things. Mm-hmm. Uh, hydrate, mm-hmm. get lit, and move. Get, get lit, like get lit as in like <laughs> smoke the joint. Light. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like like get get natural sunlight because it wakes you up. Gotcha. And and the third part was movement. It's yeah. like you don't have to work out, but mm-hmm. just uh, either, either do yogic poses or jumping jacks or push ups to kind mm-hmm. of prime your body mm-hmm. for the rest of the day because mm-hmm. it's gonna work. And I really like that. Definitely. And so so I'm interested. So you you were um, well you were basically. I was just doing fitness yeah. for, for 
maybe three years mm-hmm. just doing fitness, not focusing on the muscles. And then I kind of ventured into the gym because I'm like, well, there's more equipment here. There's more stuff to do. And I, so I started lifting some weights, not really knowing what I was doing, not yeah. really knowing how to train for bodybuilding. Um, but what really turned me on to bodybuilding was I, I could point out some specific people on Instagram that nobody's going to know about, yeah. but you know, looking at Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. I mean, I, I think most bodybuilders will be like, oh, like, <laughs> I just want to look like Arnold. Absolutely. We're, we're all, this is, all bodybuilders are hopelessly working in the shadow of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Even now? Yes. <laughs> You'll never, nobody's ever going to look like him again. Nobody's ever going to be like him again. But it keeps us kind of going to see such perfection. Yeah. So I saw him and I was like, Kind of what I was saying earlier, the body type kind of appealed to me where I was like, man, you know, especially him in the 60s before he was like famous. Yeah. Like when he was a little bit smaller and a little bit rounder and a little bit more body fat. I was just like, man, okay, if if there is a body that I would want to wear in daily life, it would be that kind of body. It's so interesting you say a body that I want to wear. So, so I read in your post that you uh, your approach to bodybuilding is you don't believe it as... I'm going to get big and that's it. That's like the standard. Well, that's you know, part right? of it. <laughs> I mean, of course, but like uh, there, there's an element of sculpting and, and nourishing Definitely. the body, right? Definitely. So I really like how you're saying like, I would like to wear that body. Like, could you talk more about that? Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, bodybuilding is just a little game you're playing. You know, it's, it's not your whole identity. I mean, it is for some people if it's their yeah. career, but for me, it's just a hobby. So it's, it's, it's like a... The way the reason I say it's a body you wear is because it is a statement. It's like fashion, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like the shirt you wear says something about you. Um, you know, the shoes you wear say something about you. But right. your physical development also says something about you. It says that you know it might say that you're motivated. It might it might signal to other people that um, maybe you're a little full of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it might signal to other people. You know, so it is something you wear. It's a statement about yourself. It's the first statement about yourself. It's, yeah. it's your appearance. So, um, and I don't, I don't think it's all bad to, to spend time working on your appearance um, because that is what it is at the end of the day is it's how your body appears. Yeah. But what goes into crafting that sort of body you're wearing is, is far deeper than, it's, it's more than skin deep. So that's that's really why I say it, it's something you wear because it's a statement, um, and it's almost like I said it's almost like something outside of yourself. You yeah. know, it's almost like you 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 have this thing with you all day long. Yeah. It's your body. You're carrying it around. It never leaves you, but you don't you don't give it attention really throughout yeah. the whole day until you're in the gym. It's like right. then you pull out your sculpture and you're like, okay, now I'm gonna work on this. Yeah. And then, and then you, you put you- it away. Yeah, you do your thing, you look, okay, this needs something, that, ew, what is that? (laughs) That's crazy. You know? (laughs) So, so when you, when you go do that, because I've seen like you, uh, you do the poses as well, Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's such a massive misunderstanding about posing, Mm -hmm. because, I mean, me personally also, if I see someone posing, yeah, I mean, this is this is prior to acquiring that knowledge about classical bodybuilding, right? Me too. Right? Yeah. I would be like, what a douchebag. What a douche, like, right? Like, wh- why the fuck is this person posing? Yeah, but, especially if they're like, Ugh, and they, yeah. don't, they don't know how to do it properly, which is most people, so they look like, you know, yeah, they look it, like it looks weird. Take yeah, shit, but exactly. it's just not coming out. Like, I don't have enough fiber in my diet. There's like veins in their forehead. Yeah. And they're just like, ah. So like and it's it's not appealing. You're right. Yeah, but but how how do you combat that? Because I know a big part of classical bodybuilding is the posing. The posing. That's so. I I actually have a video coming out soon, and I I break down what is classical bodybuilding, and I say a third of it is how you pose. Yeah. Um, the other thirds. One third of it is how you actually look, muscular development. Yeah. A third is how you pose, and a third is how you train. So, um. Yeah, so the posing, I, I see how, I used to think the same thing. I'd be like, look at this guy, he's checking out his muscles. But there's no other way, first of all, there's no other way to assess your progress. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just the baseline is there's no other way to assess how you're doing. Right. Second of all, though, it is a sport. You can call it a sport. A, a pageant is probably a more accurate term. Mm-hmm. It's a beauty pageant is really what it is. Um and you're judged on how well you hit those poses. So it would behoove you 
um, when you're in the gym to practice those poses and to make sure everything's coming along nicely, yeah. especially when there's some blood in your muscles and you look a little bit more um, just kind of full and you're able to hit the poses better. And you'll find out by posing, you'll, you'll, you'll discover two things. Number one, that it's very difficult. It's harder than building the muscles themselves, right. posing. Um, the tensing every muscle in your body, tilting the hips, making sure the collarbone is at the right angle and... It, and I, I don't even consider myself that good of a poser. So so for me, I'm just like, Ugh. So that's the first thing you discover. The second thing you'll discover is any weak points you have. You'll be like, oh, I saw, I saw you know, uh, I saw Arnold or I saw Platts hitting this pose in an old school photo. Let me try it. And then you yeah. try and hit it and you're like, what's missing here? Oh, it's my rear deltoid. Yeah. I, I need to develop that more. Yeah. You know, so... It, it, it's a way of assessing progress, but for the uninitiated, it looks it looks douchey, it looks vain. But there's a way to pose, I think, that is more vain, which is like what we were talking about yeah. before. But there's also a very artistic side to it, too, where you can express yourself. A, a lot of competition in bodybuilding back in the day, it was more geared towards like the beauty pageant aspect of it. Yeah. So the posing was the bodybuilder's way of kind of talking with the audience. He would he would kind like of like wearing your body in that sense. Yeah, definitely. He'd be like, Oh, check it out from here. <laughs> and then the crowd goes, Yeah. And then you go, Okay, check it out from here. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's it's fascinating how how, you know, that, that pageant aspect of it actually allows regular human beings who are not bodybuilders mm-hmm. to see the sort of grace and poise the human body can mm-hmm. actually express, you know? I mean, I think of it like this. Like, um, I took a couple of Pilates classes mm-hmm. and my posture greatly improved. I looked myself in the mirror like, wow, I did not know I could carry my body with that much grace and that's crazy. Yeah. And I can only imagine that level increases as you go up the scale mm-hmm. and start doing this on a regular basis. It's it's reminiscent of Grecian sculpture. It's reminiscent of, uh, you know, sculptures you'll see in history museums. Yeah. But when, for some reason, when it's embodied in the flesh and you see somebody, you know, kind of clutching their, their chest like the David, yeah, you see somebody doing it in real life, to some people it's like douchey or it's, it's, um, it's repulsive, you know? Yeah. But in yeah. a museum, it's fine art. Absolutely. So I, I, I understand, though. I understand the resistance to it. And I understand for the, for the first maybe couple months when I was posing in the gym, I, would, I, I knew like, okay, people are looking at me, people are judging me, yeah. but I really don't care because... What's, what's the exact mindset uh, that you have that you deal with that? Because I'm sure like the standard narrative for whenever you're trying to do something new is you will always have opposition. Of course. In, in general also, like anything outside the norm will have opposition. That's, yeah. that's, uh, I know this for me for a fact, like I don't work out as much but mm-hmm. I use a lot of supplements mm-hmm. to aid different parts of my body like I use things for serotonin mm-hmm. for blood circulation all of that 5-HTP yes and mm-hmm. and when I do that um, and I actually you know I'm, I'm interested in spreading the knowledge and exactly I, I try to do that I receive a lot of vilification and feedback from from friends from family because they don't understand they're like why do you have to take supplements mm-hmm. to I'm like because we're biological beings like actually one of my friends in Colombia told me this like you can fix your physiology first and then fix your psychology that's mm-hmm. easier because exactly. we always focus on i just need to get rid of like mm-hmm. this thing in my head as opposed to if i just have serotonin dopamine yeah uh anandamide endorphins all of that mm-hmm. flowing to my body mm-hmm. i'm more able to you know handle things better so so uh how do you handle this this i would say haters <laughs> how do you handle haters well it, it's something I still learn about. I mean, I've been lucky enough to not have too many haters online. Yeah. I don't actually think I've had any yet. That's um, crazy. But once I get my first like negative comment or hater, like yeah. that will be awesome. Like I'll post that and I'll be like, yes, I have my first hater. But um, you know, in in uh, thank you in no in life, uh, in my daily life, it, it's it's surprising how little people support me actually. Um. I have friends who are like I said the the initiated ones and and they understand because yeah. they're they're either doing it themselves or they've kind of they know me and they know oh he's not he's not doing it for you know he's not being unhealthy he's not doing it you know just to look better at the club you yeah. know what I mean yeah so yeah it, it it's surprising uh, the 
whopping amount of um, the whopping lack of of support that I have. Um, not not to sit here and tell a sob story, but no, it's it's absolutely real. Right. So, you know, even just people at work, like this past week, I, I think I've made a post about it. I don't know if you read it, but even just this past week at work, um, a, a woman who I don't know that well, she's like the fellow physician that works there. Okay. And um, I, I I offhanded, we were just talking about what we eat, and I said, oh yeah, you know, I'll add two scoops of protein to like a couple, <laughs> to a couple like, I know where this is going. <laughs> right, to a couple tubs of Greek yogurt yeah. and, and some granola, and I'm like, dude, it's delicious, it's like a little parfait, it's very healthy, it's very high in protein, it's it's amazing for you. Yeah. And she goes, why are you taking all that, you're taking protein, you're going to get cancer. And I'm like, so... It can come from anyone. Yeah. It was a lecture. It, she she lectured me like, why do you why do you want to do this physique stuff? I'm like, well, why does it? Why does anyone want to do negativity. anything? <laughs> it's it's all coming from that place of lack and insecurity. Like mm-hmm. I have nothing to offer to this world, so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna bitch and criticize the people who are actually making a change in their lives. Yeah. It's, it's so I I think about it like this. Like, uh, when you're su- stuck in such a place. And, and uh, that, that you can't really do anything about it mm-hmm. and you've basically doomed yourself into inaction, right? Yeah. Then you see people stepping out of the norm and doing something different. You're like, shame him! Mm-hmm. Shame him! Mm-hmm. That's exactly what happens and it's so toxic. I don't know why humans do that to each other. It's, it, it's sometimes I think it's competition. Sometimes I think it's jealousy. You know, and, and I'm guilty of it too. But it's these moments of facing a hater head on that have actually made me into the kind of person who will never ever again judge somebody for putting time and passion into a hobby yeah. even if I don't understand it 100% if if you know dog showing is your passion yeah and you spend all day clipping your Yorkies toenails yeah fuck it dude dude it's <laughs> do, do, do what you love like it's awesome I'm sure there's an art to it and I'm sure you're your, your heart is so full when you're doing that. So I will never judge you because I know how that feels. Yeah. And I also know how the passion feels. So so let's talk a bit more about the, the art and the passion of, yeah. uh, of bodybuilding. Because I, I feel like uh, with any creative pursuit, uh, there's a fair amount of self-doubt that comes in. Definitely. There's a fair amount of, uh, like we talked about, uh, criticism from outside, lack of external support. Definitely. And then also, like, you know, just being w- worn down by... I mean, because you're working on your body, in this case, it's being worn down by fatigue. Oh, yeah. So so how does one stay true to their progress in, in the fitness journey as a whole? Like, what's what's your philosophy behind that? Just looking at your the old pictures of yourself and seeing how far you've come. Because nobody can take that away from you. That's the other thing about bodybuilding is you're wearing your progress all day long. Right. So you you have a constant reminder on hand of something you've done, something you've built, right? So you always, you can always go back to that, look how far I've come, look what I've done. And even if you haven't developed your muscularity, whatever your fitness goal is, look, I'm faster on the mile, look, I'm whatever. So I think, I think it's cherishing the little victories. Yeah. Um, that, that definitely keeps me going. And of course I get discouraged sometimes, you know, this morning I was discouraged as hell. Cause yeah, I saw that post. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I, I, you know, drank a little bit last night. I don't, yeah. I actually don't drink very often, um, because of the. Oh, fitness. by the way, this is PG thirteen. You can't say that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I never drink, <laughs> no drugs. Um, anyways, no, but because of the fitness aspect of it, I try to minimize how much I drink. Right. Um, because it number one, it's calories, and number two, it it actually does inhibit muscle protein synthesis. But that's a little bit technical. Um, so, yeah, I was feeling doubtful of myself I was saying man I can't do that to myself so in those moments it 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 just helps to zoom out you know look at the whole picture look at where you've come from in the Mm -hmm. beginning um and look at where you're going you know I I, I've I've only been in the game I think training hard for like two years Mm -hmm. prior to that like I said I was messing around so I know I have a lot to look forward to too um yeah so if yeah that's that's how I stay the course I feel. Uh, okay. I want to ask you about... So, say I'm uninitiated in the okay. world of fitness, right? And it's just so daunting, you know? You, you go online, you're like, oh, yeah. how to get abs? You know, how, how to have a body? 
and and the general consensus or the general media that that you consume after you quote mm-hmm. unquote start wondering about fitness is is often like I would not say often but sometimes there's a lot of bogus programs there's a lot of contradictory information that comes in oh yeah <laughs> and and basically the whole world becomes your advisor hey dude take this protein this is better um or for that matter eat this this is good for your i don't know for your fucking testosterone i don't know yeah you know, people say all kinds of stuff and with so much uh, choices you know there's a paradox of choice yep how does one navigate this market i know exactly what you're saying it's you're you're totally right about all the the bogus plans and everything it all just waters down like i said it waters down the simple the real simplicity of fitness it's so simple it really is it's not easy but it's simple so how do you navigate it well i could point you in the direction of people who i think are really good and knowledgeable people to uh to you know look at their content and 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 garner some information from that but you, i think it's all about start with science right Okay. So start by looking at what does research show uh, grows muscle, right? Because really, so what does, let me, let me finish that thought. So what does research show builds muscle? What does research show is an optimal diet for doing that? Right. Um, and recovery. So just, just getting those three things in order, training, diet, recovery. That's it. That's, that's it. That's it. Dude, I wish someone would have told me that <laughs> early on because it's it's really easy to get demotivated because you you start something, you're sticking to it, new information comes in. Mm-hmm. Oh, take this to do that, and it's it's just so hard. So so uh, coming back to what I was talking to you about, like, so with all this information, what would be you've already mentioned the research part. When it comes to the actual execution of the trading, how do you go about that? And I know people have plans, mm-hmm. like uh, you know, like you make workout programs and stuff. And that works, but like, how much of it is is dynamic? Like, because I think the the problem with uh, having consistent bodybuilding routines is you get bored. Exactly. So how do you, how do you face that? Well, uh, some of it is self regulating. Some of it you're like, oh, you know, I, I I can give I know I can give my back a little bit more volume today. Yeah. Because it feels strong, or or because it's it's lagging behind. So so some of it is you self regulating as you go, and and giving more attention to weaker body parts. And giving less attention to strong body parts and changing up your pre-workout nutrition, right. more carbs, all these different things you can change around. But yes, of course it does get mundane. And I think that's what separates people who will stick with bodybuilding or fitness from those who won't, Right, is the mundaneness, right? So I'm crazy enough to actually enjoy exercising and enjoy like... How that feels on my body and I know a lot of people don't enjoy it they just yeah. think it's cumbersome and it you know they, they just rather not do it it's it's uncomfortable so um, despite all the mundane aspects of it what keeps you going is this sort of level you reach in your training where it, it's for me even at this point it's becoming less and less about how the body is changing physically right. and more just about the meditation uh, you know not to throw that word around too much but or, or the process and just kind of being present, just paying your dues day after day, um, you know, we're, we're just do, doing what you can day after yeah. day. It's the consistency. So, and I, I, I think that's something that you can't teach people. I don't think you can teach people passion. Yeah. Um, Talk a bit more, more about the, the meditation aspect. I know you, you're like sensitive about the word because it, it does often get thrown around a lot. It's a buzzword it, yes, for millennials My, Or mindfulness for that matter. Mm-hmm. Or avocados. <laughs> but, um, uh, exactly. <laughs> Pineapple dude, on pizza. It was so <laughs> funny. Um, I went to this cafe um, and I got this avocado toast. I mean, just I just looked at it. I didn't get it. It was $9. I came back home, went to Trader Joe's, bought three avocados for $3. Yep. Already had bread. Yep. And then I used one avocado on a bread. Yep. I already had butter. In one dollar, yep. I had the avocado toast. <laughs> it's it's such a yep. fucking sham. <laughs> but but uh, no, like so so you're saying now it's not more about the bodybuilding, the mundanity, but you've kind of transcended that realm and you're more in a the a little bit, yeah. In in the process. So um meditation and bodybuilding, do they have connections? Do they link? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think if you don't develop the baseline mindfulness you need to have to be present with the muscle while you're training it you're you're not going to make very much progress uh, 
like you said, that that's kind of what pushed you through some plateaus when you were starting out was just feeling the muscle and connecting yeah. with it. Um, and, and at this point, it's almost like I, I, I'll almost shut my eyes during a set and just really feel every single movement of my muscle and just you kind play of music? being there. I do play music. I do play music. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I will. But I, I think music helps. Um, and, but I don't think it takes away from being present with the muscle, uh, the music. But um, it's 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 definitely uh, mindfulness in the gym. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I see te- texting while they're doing leg extensions. Yeah, yeah. You know, or or the chicks who are doing these. Yeah. And they're texting. <laughs> you know, it's just how much are you getting done, right? right? Right. Not much. Like, you, why are you paying for a gym membership if you're just going to? They just want to go through the motions. Go through like, the motions, yeah. Be proud of myself. I, I, I went to the gym today. You mm-hmm. know, it was, it was really good. But at the end of the day, you don't even know what you're doing. You don't need, yeah, you don't, you don't know what you're doing. And you worse, you might be wasting money. Yeah. Because you're not using uh, the equipment to the potential that it could be right. used. So, yeah, I, I think it's probably fine to text in between sets. But during your set, what are you doing? Like... <laughs> That's just the antithesis. You have to be able to to feel what's happening and to get the... the it's all like a t- conversation between your muscles. You're like, oh, okay, is, I, can I handle more weight right now? Yes. Okay, can I handle more weight right now? No. Okay, let me drop down. It's, it's you know, so... And even the little postural changes mm-hmm. as you're listening to your, your muscle, you're like, oh, man, like my, my rear deltoid isn't getting much action right now. I, can't, I just yeah. can't... Why is that? Why is that happening? Let me retract my scapula. Okay, no. Okay, let me... Oh, okay, there it is. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's a way that the exercise is supposed to feel on your muscle. Yeah. And if it's not feeling that way, you're not doing it right. 100%. <laughs> I had this... Uh, so I was in Mumbai this summer, right? I had this uh, this Pilates instructor who I just met. She was like, you have terrible posture. <laughs> I'm like, I pride myself on the fact that I stand straight with my shoulders down. That's <laughs> 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 Jordan Peterson. <laughs> But um, no, she was like, no, you, your, your tummy is tucked out. Um, all of your weight is, is centered on your lower back. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you call this muscle. Lats? La- your, your lats are basically unused in the posture. Oh, and yeah. if you clench your lats, your chest will stick right up. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, but, but that's fine. He's like, no, you're going to have terrible back pain in the mm. future. And and lo and behold, the prophecy was right. Within five days, I was back to her. Like, yeah, you fucking bitch. You put a placebo <laughs> in my head. Now it's actually <laughs> happening. Yeah. And then she was like, okay, just, you know, put your attention away from uh, the lower back and, you know, try to feel these muscles. I was like, hi, guys. I did not know you existed. And it was crazy. And ever since then, I've become so cognizant of this fact. Whenever I'm walking, if I've noticed any sort of strain in my lower back, I immediately say hi to my muscles and there yeah. they are. It's, it's check crazy. In. Just check in. Yeah. It, they're, they're, that's why there's such a thing as a body scan meditation, right? This is what? Well, a body scan is basically going head to toe, feeling every little sensation of every component of your body, usually yeah. while lying down. Um, <clears throat> I, I've done it a few times. I'm not a big into it, but yeah. it, they'll say stuff like, feel, feel your fingers. Feel yeah. every little sensation. Feel the skin on your thumb. Feel the slight pressure of gravity pressing against your hands as you're just lying here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just checking in. That that, that can I be love a, that. That can be also a great way to. I love that because it's like, yeah. when's the last time someone said, "Hey, uh, just checking in"? Because, I mean, like I said before, you're so much in here mm-hmm. that this gets rejected. I've actually done uh, tangential meditations which are close to that one, mm-hmm. but I noticed that you know you do, you're just lost in your head, and then you're like. I'm a human being. This is my hand. Mm-hmm. This is my palm. I oh, can touch it. Oh, it's trippy. It's trippy. It's crazy. <laughs> and, um, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, the checking in aspect of it, it, it can bring you, uh, like you said, it can alleviate pains, but it's also the principle of checking into something that's happening right now. Yeah. So it's a, <clears throat> it's a way, it's something that's bringing you back to the moment, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a great way to alleviate anxiety yeah. or stress is to, is to just think about what, okay, what's happening right now? What's ha- uh, This is totally off topic. But, That's totally fine. But, but what, what's happening right now, yeah. right? Am I listening to the person I'm talking to? Am, yeah. I, am I feeling my body? You know what I mean? Yeah. 
It's definitely, definitely. 100%. Like, w- before we started this, I, I noticed immediately I had a little tension here. <laughs> so I went outside. I was like, ooh, just, just shake it out. It's, it's really important. Definitely. If you don't do that and you sit with that tension, it's like, mm-hmm. it's going to bother you throughout. You yes. want to be, your body should be as free and loose as possible. Mm-hmm. When you engage in anything for that matter, mm. like like I see it like this. When I go out um, on the weekends, if my body is tense, mm-hmm. I'll like stay back for 10 minutes, relieve it and then go out mm-hmm. because I don't want to bring that tension with me. I want to, yeah. you know, un- so I can be a loose and free version of myself as opposed to be like this. Right. Well, it, it's, it's, it's a subconscious message that's getting across to other people, your body language, right? Yeah. So yeah. If, you're, if you're stiff and, and people notice it and there's sort of a, a below the radar interpretation of your mood just based yeah. on how 100%. you're... Yeah, it's like, oh, this guy, you know, he might just be standing a little stiff, but you might be more likely to perceive that person as stiff as a person. Yeah, like, yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know? So... If a funny thing that that happens with me sometimes when I'm seeing patients and they're mm-hmm. and they're aggravating me. By the way, um, we forgot to talk about this. What, what do you do exactly? <laughs> uh, nothing too grandiose. That's I'm an fine. I'm an ophthalmic technician right now. Which uh, is a fancy word for what? Somebody who helps out an eye doctor. Sick. So yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to get clinical experience for yeah. PA school, but actually, like. It, the job has me seeing patients and interacting with patients and kind of playing this game of what could be going on with them as I'm listening to mm-hmm. their complaints and stuff like that. So when I notice, back to what I, my point, yeah. uh, when I notice that a patient is, because sometimes patients will give you a hard time, mm-hmm. particularly the, the older patients. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll never work in geriatrics, <laughs> but... If they're giving me a hard time, I'll notice that as I'm sitting at my desk, I'll f- I'll notice that my um my feet are pronated, like this. Yeah. I'll be like, why am I holding this tension right now? And yeah. I'll just relax it. Yeah. Because I was I, I'm leaning over and I'm like, oh, why am I flexing my my um what's that called the gastrocnemius? I should know anatomy. <laughs> but uh yeah yeah I'm like, uh, wh- where did that come from? Okay, there's a tension in my foot right now. Even as I'm like talking to this person, just because they're getting on my nerves. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. Dude, take that away. <laughs> it's 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 so evident. I'm so glad you mentioned that mm-hmm. because because I, I can I can see it, I I can feel it happening in the moment, mm-hmm. but I I don't feel it like afterward because I just forget about it. So, exactly. So it's like you really have to be cognizant of how your body responds to different mm-hmm. situations. Like uh, there's this really interesting analogy that Elliot Hulse uses. Uh, mm-hmm. For you guys who don't know about him, uh, he's a cool guy. Um, does a lot of spiritual and fitness stuff, but um, he says that. If you see a dog and it's in like a fight mode, you'll see its back and neck will stiff up, like, mm. right? Mm. And if a dog is in a playful and relaxed mm. mood, it will, you know, yeah, you let you like play with its belly, which is the softest part. The, mm-hmm. That's where all the organs are, right? Mm-hmm. And I see how, how that manifests in my life as well. And mm-hmm. I'm sure like everyone else is like when you meet someone and you have a confrontation or you don't mm-hmm. like that conversation, I do this. Mm-hmm. I turn my body around like this yeah. and I talk. I talk like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Or or I, I fidget with things or mm-hmm. I tap my feet or I'm like, I basically indicate with my body because it's, we're still in a polite age, I can't say. Mm-hmm. You should stop talking. You suck. <laughs> um, but I'm like, I'm ready yeah. to leave. And some people just don't get those social cues. Some mm-hmm. people just keep on they hammering. Keep, keep hammering. It's like, <laughs> here's my, my, my spiel and I'm going to deliver Mm-hmm. the beginning and the end and you're here to pay yeah bitch. exactly it's <laughs> crazy i get that a lot that that's a big thing at the gym too like you you might be giving like total fuck off vibes to somebody and they yeah. just won't get it and they'll i appreciate people being social in the gym but sometimes it's um like some people are just kind of obnoxious to talk to <laughs> absolutely absolutely Dude, we i believe like even in college I feel like we're just walking around with psychopaths and sociopaths amongst our midst all the time. But just, everyone's just so good at like hiding it. Especially because everyone here is neurotic as hell because we're all so pretty smart to yeah. go to BU. Yeah. So we're thinking, <laughs> we're we're all thinking and we're all neurotic. Yeah. So. Here's here's what I here's what I think about it all the time. It's like we're constantly seeing people, mm-hmm. constantly have headphones in. Everyone's wrapped in their own world, right? Uh, yeah. And then any sort of interaction is like oh. It's an interruption. It's like, wait, let me take these out. Okay. Oh. Now we up? can talk. Yeah. What's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. 
That's crazy. You're though. bothering me. I'm holding them like two inches away from my ears because I'm about ready to put them right yeah, back in. <laughs> my world, my problems. Yeah. Let me just, you know, mm-hmm. enjoy that. Like, fuck, fuck this. By the way, I'm guilty of it. I'm not trying to act holier than thou. Like, do I. like I do it. Too. I'm just yeah. noticing the human nature. Yeah. And, it, and it's very interesting. Um, and like you said, so it, when we notice that our posture is stiff and stuff like that, it's normal. It doesn't mean we're doing something wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that, you know, because I'm kind of turned away from this person, that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Absolutely. It, you're, that's your subconscious talking to you and saying, saying I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. And, and, well, because it takes time and obviously right. diplomacy to say that verbally so mm-hmm. your body plays that, that part. Like, it does. I'm going to do it for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And... Uh, you're not you're not any worse of a person for for mm-hmm. doing that um but i think what helps is becoming aware of it yeah and then maybe in times when you're doing it when it's not the other person that's making you mad it's maybe just your own shyness or something 100%. if you're aware of it then you can like ameliorate that you know what i'm trying yeah. to say so it's 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 this this concept um it's 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 in psychology it's called the shadow mm-hmm and I just read about it and I was blown away because it basically says, do this exercise. Is that Carl, Carl Jung? Carl Jung. Carl yeah, Jung. Yeah. yeah. So it says, um, find a person who annoys you mm-hmm. or someone you admire. Yep. Right. And then have a verbal conversation in your head with that person mm-hmm. and say, why are you doing this to me? Right. Mm-hmm. Ask those questions that you can't ask in real life. Mm-hmm. Right. And imagine their answer. Mm hmm. Once that has happened, now become that person. So instead of saying, oh, okay, actually, first you say to them in your head, you're stupid, you're depressed, you're sad, mm-hmm. you make me sick, right? Yeah. And then they <laughs> give you like an answer and whatever, right? And afterward, you say, I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'm stupid. You own your shadow. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. so crazy because it's like you're hiding from that person because they they expose to you a part of yourself that you yourself have repressed mm-hmm. and you don't want it to like resurface. Right. Because it's going to bring a lot of tension, bad emotions. But so a part of reclaiming your shadow, and I know very little about it, is is to basically get in touch with those emotions by confronting the issues you have with people mm-hmm. and just saying, okay, I think he's depressed. It's probably because I'm hiding my depression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's not always that black and white, mm-hmm. but it's it's I did it. I felt 10 times lighter. Mm-hmm. With a couple of people in my head. And and one of the big things I realized, like, I, I remember in my senior year, particularly at BU, yeah. I was getting pretty stressed out during times. I mean, if you're a student at BU, who Absolutely, probably, yeah. you know. It's the worst college. And when I would get, uh, well, that's uh, that's hi, a different just, video. Just, uh, <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't go here. I'm kidding. Right. Well, I noticed that when I would get stressed, one of the number one ways it would manifest in my personality was irritability. Yeah. So, and I would get very irritable just of somebody not pushing their chair in or this or that. But then I realized, and and this was kind of something that opened me up a little, was everything we hate about others, we are in in our, you know, in our moments too. We have moments like that too. You know, I'm like, oh, how could this person be so stupid that they would just walk right in front of me? I've done that twice. And then I'm like, then it happens to you. You're on your phone and I'm like, oh, I just did it too. <laughs> like, so we're all just so hopelessly fallible as humans. But, 100%. And I think uh, just recognizing that and giving yourself that kind of like little, giving yourself a little bit of rope and like, you're okay. You're. <laughs> Dude, it feels good. It feels good because you have, okay, it's, especially if you want to do like something grandiose with your life. If mm. You have big plans, right? There's this immense pressure on yourself that you yourself manifest. Like, do this. Mm-hmm. You are the perfect human or you die, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel this a lot with myself. But then every now and then I have these moments where I'm like, shit, I'm a mortal human being. I could die. I could very well die. And, and shit, I have so many flaws and it's just such a relief. Right. I sit back and I'm like, ah. Oh, right. That's good. And and there's never ever been a human, at least a sane one, who's yeah. who's said, oh, I have no flaws and I'm ready to die right now. Right? Well, it was Seneca who said that, but that's, that's Seneca. Right. Who's that? Seneca is, uh, he's one of the Stoic philosophers. Um, actually, there's this book right there. It's called How to Die. Mm-hmm. So I was reading that on the T. Mm-hmm. Uh, can, you, can you bring that book for How a How to Die? Yeah. <laughs> 
Do people like, are you okay? <laughs> I, it's so crazy. So this is a book, How to Die, right? Wow. It, it look, look at look at Seneca's body. Like he's wow. also fit. He's a 70 year old man. Wow. It's basically a treatise on like, ex- because, because uh, ancient Rome was all about oppressive rulers who would right. just kill you. So that, especially Seneca felt that it was honorable to take your own life. I'm not uh, prescribing that, but um, his his philosophy was that um, it's not worth to live a life if you don't die well. Mm-hmm. In, in in the sense that die with dignity, like you're 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 always like clutching on life, like please don't leave me, please don't leave me. But mm-hmm. uh, you can just uh, basically meditate on death on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So one of the popular things that comes from Stoic philosophy is this uh, Latin word, which means memento mori. Mm-hmm. Which is remember death. Remember death. Most people get it uh, tattooed on their mm-hmm. hands because mm-hmm. it's it's like the most instant reminder of mortality. Yeah. Remember death. You're gonna yeah. die. You can die now. Like <laughs> oh okay. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. But yeah, no, it's a it's a cool book. When I read uh, back in College of General Studies at BU, yeah. one of, one of the good things about it, even though it gets so much crap, is that we read all the classics. We didn't read this book, but we yeah. did read Aurelius. We read his meditations. Oh, that's crazy. I did not know Bew did that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Humanities class. Yeah. That's crazy. It, I, I still look back on those readings and I'm like, wow, like I'm glad I read those books. Did you read uh, meditations like fully? Um, I, there might have been a, sec- a selection of it. Yeah. I don't think we read the whole thing. Thanks, man. Um, but one, one of the big takeaways is holding lightly to life was one yeah. of the things he said so like holding so and it's it's similar to like the whole buddhist idea of non-attachment stuff like that so right. just holding lightly you know realizing it can always slip out of your fingertips yeah. um and, and and that's 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 something that it's a muscle i feel like that i to get back to like bodybuilding type vocabulary I mean, you don't have to I love where this is going <laughs> right yeah. right yeah, it's a muscle that it's some people might call it the uh, the I don't give a shit muscle. Yeah, you know, yeah. but I, I call it the uh, the rational kind of let, let's look at the real what's really going on here. OK, we're monkeys on a rock in space context. <laughs> it just gives you context like, oh, yeah. Oh, and really, we, we like to think that we're all so special and worth something. Mm-hmm. And maybe we are in our small human milieu. Yeah. But in the scope of things, we're just a, a pulse, just a beating heart that's, yeah. that nobody will remember. We're insignificant. <laughs> we're, we, literally, we are insignificant. Literally, we will all be stardust and nobody will remember. And there won't even be in anybody. It'll just be star, everything stardust and that's it <laughs> that's it man it's it's crazy i mean mortality is such a good concept i'm, I'm glad that we're we're ex, ex, being exposed to these ideas at, at you know you're 22 22 right? yeah I'm 22 22, 22. Yeah. it's it's crazy that we we get these ideas now because i i um so it's interesting i was at a store and i went with this book obviously it's become something of a phenomenon because mm-hmm. whenever i go i'm just reading this book people are like oh what is that how to die oh my god <laughs> yeah um so the store was like is that stoicism i was like Plus one for you. Yes. How are you? And she's like, yeah, I've, uh, I wanted to read this book, but I'm scared. It's going to make me confront stuff. I'm like, mm. Oh, but then, but then I see how it works out because like us as, as I'd say youngsters, 21, 22, we can understand it intellectually, mm-hmm. maybe incorporate a couple of teachings in us. Mm-hmm. But as someone who's lived the, the whole experience of life, mm-hmm. I think they might be more scared because then they might be like confronted with truths. At a later age, but they can real. do nothing about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's too real. It's for us. It's like oh, it's a little bit of an abstraction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. At, at our age, we're just kind of like, well, we'll probably have a lot more years left, so we, yeah, we can kind of toy around with this idea of death, and it doesn't feel that threatening. But um, it's interesting. The reason, like you were saying, our exposure to these ideas, I feel like it it was it's taboo to like talk about death, and 100%. you know, especially. In, in the more puritanical aspects of, I feel like, fundamentalist religion, they've, yeah. they've almost put a Band-Aid over the idea of death. Wait, it's not the end. Here's a Band-Aid. Yeah. You go to heaven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's just another way of circumventing the actual Absolutely. thing, which is remembering death, right? Yes. Oh, no, don't worry. About that. Don't worry about that thing. You've got your whole life. It's yeah. fine. Don't worry about death. No, that does, that's, that's just... A, it's so crazy. It's just a transition. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. That, that's what I love about stoicism also. It's like, 
they don't let you sweep shit under mm-hmm. the rug. They're like, okay, put the rug out, see all that shit, and eat it. Yeah. It's it's that sort of like humility in the human condition mm-hmm. and that sort of groundedness that I admire. But um, well, that that's manifested in many ways in fitness, right? How's that? So it <coughs> it. it it's it's forever humbling to be part of a a uh, a fitness practice like bodybuilding. You'll always look at poses of yourself. You'll always look at your your numbers, your strength, and you'll forever be disappointed. At yeah. least with some of the some of what you see, right? Yeah. And you have to look at it, and you have to eat it, and you have to still you know go after it, even if it hurts, right? Yeah. So I I think that's that's facing. Facing the the imperfections that we have and and looking at those little, you know, and I, I'm talking about this and I'm just I'm a freaking mess like, like I was that's like, fine and we all are right so yeah. that's that's another thing that I realized about like especially um so I see it like this so if you say educate yourself if you are a self educator and you educate yourself with a variety of literature mm-hmm. like this anything else right you naturally want to disseminate that information to your friends and, and share it so that they can mm. also learn, that you can also learn the process. But this happened to me a lot, is that, but I'm a mess. Mm-hmm. How can I do that? You know, mm-hmm. it's that sort of hypocrisy. It's, right. like, it's like, I know all these great things. Mm-hmm. I've incorporated some of them in my life, mm-hmm. but I'm still a mess. Right. What gives me the right to have this podcast or, you know, have something else and, and say these things? I could, yeah. Be, but but you just have to balance it like because you're never going to be perfect if you if you always feel like i'll do this mm-hmm. once i'm not a mess you're gonna die well have you read 12 rules to life jordan Peterson? of course i have okay i actually haven't read it <laughs> <laughs> so but i know one of his rules is always assume the person you're talking to knows something you don't right yes so we're all kind of qualified because we've all worn a human body yeah. and lived in, inside of a human brain for X amount of years. We're qualified to say something about it. Right. Qualified to say something about the human experience. We're qualified to say something about things that have helped us, things that yeah. have worked, right? Um, I, I do think if you, if you get preachy and yeah. you start telling people, th- then it's like, okay, yeah, well, yeah. then where's your, where's your actual credibility here? Yeah. But if you're just sharing... Like, for example, in bodybuilding, right? So I have moments all the time where I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not that... Uh, my my physique in the scope of things is kind of average, whatever. Yeah. Who am I to put out YouTube videos telling you how you should work out? Dude. Telling you, who am I to put, you know, put pictures on Instagram and talk about, you know, um, my disgust with modern bodybuilding? <laughs> who is this guy? He's, like, tiny, like... Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> but, but I say it anyways because... Because I feel like I've looked into it and I feel like I have a passion there that, that yeah. is rare and I recognize my individual spark. Yeah. Um, but I, I totally get that whole thing. Like, who's qualified? I mean, you can be qualified in on paper. Yeah. You know, you can have a degree in in world religions and then yeah. you can talk about it. But so we all we all are qualified to a degree, I think. I agree 100%. So actually, one of the rules from uh, Peterson's book is... Uh, the. F- I think it's the second or third one, but it's tell the truth or at least don't lie, right? Mm-hmm. And it goes on this premise. It's like, no matter how stupid you think you are, mm-hmm. no matter how biased, no matter how, how much of a half truth you have, mm-hmm. it's your truth. You mm-hmm. must learn to say it. Mm-hmm. Because in that process of saying your truth, you learn what your actual truth is. And that also shifts, you know, right. as, as you go along. But fearing rejection or... Fearing that sort of like uh, duality that happens in your body when you're like, I shouldn't do this because mm-hmm. I, fe- I don't feel like that is is basically not good. Because he says, be courageous with your truth. Mm-hmm. Say, like, it's fine. You will be made fun of. You right. Know? There's this, uh, well, it, it well, I yeah, yeah, there's, there's this uh, lyric in a Pink Floyd song that I just remember. It's called Fearless. And the lyric is, fearlessly the idiot face the crowd. Because mm. when I'm saying stuff, especially when I'm, you know, still in a formative stage, I mm-hmm. might say a lot of stupid things, mm-hmm. but I'm fearless about my truth. And in that process, I might learn something and oh, become, learn. Yeah. I don't know, not the wise man, but like a man instead of an idiot, which yeah. I still think is good. Just 0.01% better. 100%. You know? Yeah. And I think it helps me actually to think about people who I genuinely don't think give a shit. Yeah. So, so like 
quasi yeah. uh, to name drop here. Yeah. I'll think in the back of my me- mind sometimes, I'd be like, dude, Quasi would have just said that. He would yeah. have just said this straight up. And, yeah. and and hanging out with people like that who are so unfiltered, yeah. you learn that you can get away with saying a lot more than you think. Have you seen the Russell Brand? Have you seen the shit he says? Where? Uh, oh, on like uh, interviews and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and, the, and the general consensus, oh, it's Russell, he's like that. Yeah. He gets away with a lot of so fucking much. shit. I mean... Well, because he has a reputation for speaking his truth, you know what I yes, mean? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So if you're if you're lying all day long, mm-hmm. if you're not saying what's on your mind, um, then when you say your truth, it's a little bit more whoa. Yeah. What was that? So I that that is something actually. Going right back to that woman who was giving me crap for taking protein powder. Yeah. You know, I I, I told myself in that moment I was like, because the next day she apologized. She's like, I was very very um, heated up about it. Yeah. I'm really passionate, but I just don't want you to get cancer. So like, <laughs> so like she didn't learn anything. But I said to myself in that moment, yeah. I was like, I'm going to be honest with her how I felt. Yeah. And so, so she said that and I go, and I go, yeah, you were very passionate. Yeah. You were, you were, yeah. Like I, I didn't. felt good though, right? I, yes. I didn't sugarcoat it. I didn't go, oh no, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Whatever. No, I was like, yeah, you, you were really heated up. <laughs> it feels good. Just feels say, good. just say it, man. Be, be known as a sincere uh, person who just speaks from their heart. And, and, and I, think, I think that's actually, not to toot my own horn, but I think that's what separates my fitness content online. I've seen that. I've actually seen that. So much of it out there is just, you know, arm day, tag your arm, buddy. Like, <laughs> how many millions of captions are tag, tag your gym partner? Or it's a girl. International chest day. Yeah, international chest day. Got a hashtag juicy pump. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, there's so much of that out there. Yeah. That that's like the pornography of fitness. It's the look at it for two seconds, go, huh, oh, that's yeah. cool, and then swipe past. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? But but I was like, okay, so if I'm gonna make a fitness Instagram, I'm a very, I feel really deeply, and I feel really deep emotions in life. Just, yeah. That's just who I am. Um, so I'm going to just be as expressive and say exactly how I'm feeling right. at the risk of being looked at as, you know, uh, who, who's this douchey guy or uh, why, uh, why is he putting so much passion into yeah. such a strange little endeavor? Absolutely. You know, like P- I'm okay with people not seeing And that's what bodybuilding, it. like you said, like imagine if someone cuts their dog's toenail, it's like putting passion into that. Yes. It's like even more like outcry from the public. Right. Right. So it, it, the best you can do is just, is, is just, I, I, and this is something I still remind myself of is just to just say what you mean, you know? hundred percent. Yeah. So to like, uh, slowly start to wrap things up, um, I do want to talk about your passions aside from bodybuilding because because one of the central premises of this podcast is to bring in polymaths mm-hmm. and when i say poly i'm maths, flattered you I, would even <laughs> consider me that but when, thank I, when you. I say polymaths i don't mean einstein i mean like polymaths in the making yeah like like you know you or for that matter like, mm-hmm. consider myself not to toot my horn but mm-hmm. in that sense so so uh and i think that being a polymath or at least let's skip that word being someone who's grounded in different disciplines right um actually aids your main discipline like mm-hmm. it gives you a sort of comprehensive idea of things because you can now unlock different parts of your brain and start to think about the same thing in mm-hmm. different ways right you get yeah, multiple definitely. paradigms right so so what are some other things that you do to, apart from bodybuilding that well um i i i'm notorious for for among at least my family and friends for going through a lot of phases okay and they're all like when's the bodybuilding phase gonna end Right, okay. so they'll say stuff like that. So prior to that, I was I was a performing magician for like six years in high school. That's crazy. <laughs> so I was doing that, and uh, I'm a little out of practice. Like I haven't done anything really recently, but that was my bodybuilding. I it's what I lived and breathed was magic, and I yeah. would, and I would do it around school and, and stuff, and I I would do shows and stuff. Did what what was the mindset behind that? Like what what made you go to magic? For me, seeing. Uh, well, I saw a magician on TV who who levitated a woman, and basically he did what's known as in magic the Azra levitation, A Z R A H or something. Yeah. And it's a levitation where she the woman levitates, she's perpendicular, and then she's covered with a blanket. Yeah. And then is disappeared, is vanished, yeah. and it's just like a two in one crazy freaking illusion. 
Yeah. So I, I saw that and I was like, you know, magic is one of those things that people see, but they don't know, like they see it on the surface level as like kids entertainment, as just hokey little tricks, but it could be more. And that's yeah. kind of like what bodybuilding too. Yeah. Right? So I, I was like, man, like there's these veiny freaks, but it could be something real here. It could be something more. It could be an art. It yeah. could be a, 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 a fashion statement. It could be a, you know, a, a, a physical endeavor as well as a, a creative endeavor. There's so much it could be. And I, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at spotting the gem in, among a weird interest. I and I'll, like, and I'll yeah, be like, yeah. I'll be like, this is a weird interest overall, but there's some, there's a little something in there that's so cool yeah. and so vi- like, you know, it transcends. It's like, it's and, like that, that one degree of deviation from the norm. Yes. Just one, just, just enough to like yeah. make it happen. Yeah. It's, it's that one little gem in the, in the turd, you know, <laughs> of, of, of what bodybuilding is yeah. to the most part. Um, so, so you did magic. Um, and then what else? Like. Uh, Well, I was making short films for a little while. When I was a kid, like from 12 to like 15, maybe, I I was just making movies like all the time with my buddies. They all sucked, but I loved editing and I still love editing so much. I could edit in front of a computer all day long, playing around with different images and different music. So that's actually something I'm excited for with this YouTube channel coming up uh, is is the editing aspect of it. Yeah. yeah, so so it's basically been film, uh, magic, uh, and then there's other little things I've done in there, like getting into meditation and yeah, and um, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty, as far as creative stuff, photography, yeah. a little bit of modeling. So, I feel so it's a, it's a pretty well rounded image. I think about it like this. <clears throat> so um, when I first uh, dabbled with the idea of creativity, I mm-hmm. was already like a pretty solid artist. I mean, I used to draw a lot as a kid. And then over some over some time, I became a writer. Mm-hmm. I was, and then I started doing poetry. Then I started uh, watching films. Mm-hmm. Then I started writing again. Then I started playing music. Then I started singing. Mm-hmm. Then I started, you know, consuming information. Then I started getting into self-help, personal mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. Then I started, uh, you know, speaking better. Mm-hmm. Then I started doing other things like meditation. And I feel like all of these little activities that we just do as hobbies, we don't put much mind into it, Exactly, right? yeah. But but in the overall, they add to the person itself. Because I think about it like this. Like, even education for that matter. Mm-hmm. I'm an advertising major at BU. Mm-hmm. I can just ground myself in that. But mm-hmm. I refuse to do that. Yeah. Because I feel like I can add so much more. I can look at one thing from multiple perspectives. I can study psychology do that, mm-hmm. right? Then I'm like, okay, what if I study economics? I can understand the money of it. Mm-hmm. And then... How do I just get into people's heads by having those conversations, right? Mm-hmm. And it's I feel like it's all those mundane activities that we do day to day, which actually accentuate our main passion. Right. So for most people, going to the gym is just a mundane thing you do every day. Yeah. But s- some of us are weird enough to like make that into like a huge thing. Hundred percent. Going to the gym, you yeah. know, building muscle. Um, but it's like you said. So all these different tangential interests there doesn't appear on the surface to be a connection with some of them. Yeah. Right? But if you look at the whole story, it makes sense looking back. Absolutely. Why I went from here to there to there. Oh, because I found out about this. Yeah. And it resonates with this, which is something I really, that's part of me, you know? So. Yeah. I, I see it like uh, one of the Da Vinci principles, there's seven, is is connexion. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's basically the ability to make connections from seemingly distinct fields. Mm-hmm. Art, science, mm-hmm. logic, creativity. I like that. Math, painting, mm-hmm. and then fuse it all together to make something. Because uh, Da Vinci was basically an architect, a party planner, an artist, a mathematician. Party planner. He was <laughs> like he was. planned weddings and stuff. Yeah, like like he used to plan fabulous parties. And That's it's, awesome. It's because of of the the fields of experience from which you could borrow from, it just accentuated his art mm-hmm. um, with the Vitruvian man already. And right. Then, and then he made the first flying machine. All of that, I think, is is great. And I, especially, I see it now. Like, I talk to a lot of my friends and people I meet. Uh, the general consensus is, oh, I do one thing. And yeah. I do that good. And that's that's. there's no problem in that. Yeah. You can be exceptionally good in one thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's always helpful. Like you said, your bodybuilding is your hobby. You're passionate about it, but it's not something that defines it's you. It's not my whole life, by yeah. any means. <laughs> but your whole life exists on those other tangents. And then yes. it accentuates that thing that Definitely. people see. Yeah. 
It's crazy, man. Well, I, I think with bodybuilding, I, I don't know if you wanted to wrap up. Can no, I uh, say go ahead, more? go ahead, All go right. ahead. Yeah. So uh, with bodybuilding, there there's an interesting crowd you get because what it is is so, it's it's an ath- it's an athletic endeavor in the sense that you're using your body, yeah. but it's an artistic endeavor as well with the presentation and the posing and the attention to detail right. and stuff like that. So that's two separate realms that on the surface don't seem like they mesh. Right. Creativity and uh, just brute athleticism, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But I think, and that was something I kind of struggled with, with for a little while. I'm like, I'm, I'm a really kind of cerebral person. I, I feel really creative. And, but do I want to be like an athlete? Do I want to do like bodybuilding? Yeah. Like, do I want to be a fitness <laughs> model? But I'm also creative. How do you, so it's, it's crazy. Like, so you balance that. You, you're trying to like find which identity comes up or if they fuse together or not. Well, that's that's why classic bodybuilding appealed to me. That makes sense. Is because yeah 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 because nowadays it's n- it's not as focused on the yeah. art. It's not as focused on the beauty and the attention to detail. It's just focused on as much muscle mass, as much steroids, as much whatever. More, more, more. You know. But back in the day, there was like a fineness to it. There's like a fine art to it. There's the yeah. athleticism and the art to it. I love that. The photography, the posing, the, the yeah. All that, yeah. It's it's like a whole realm of creativity which can only be accessed by those who see it. Yeah. It it really is. It and, and to those who don't see it, it's just weird. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It's like it's like even even I think uh creativity in that sense exists in um like when, when a couple of economists meet and they discuss like those terms and within those terms they put out different tangents and then yeah. they use that. I think it's crazy, but like but but that's again that's not an accessible field and and mm-hmm. I think bodybuilding is more accessible. So I'm really interested to see how you how you feel, how you foster that creativity while still holding on to the right. right side of your brain. Right, exactly. It's it's a right brain left brain thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. All right, man. Thank you. This was amazing. <laughs> Thank I'm, you so I'm much. So glad dude. you were my first guest. That was a great conversation there. I man. know. I loved I, it. I, I loved it, dude. It was. I mean. I we're had just, like, we're just I, vibing. I know. I had a set of questions, but I was like, fuck it. I was going to look at my phone, but I was like, yeah, I don't need it. It's a good sign. Yeah. Is yeah. it still recording? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is the Vitruvian Man podcast where we bring in the best human minds. <laughs> um, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> where, we, where we bring in uh, people who are just killing it um, in arts, sciences, and basically follow the Da Vinci model for perfection. Um, this was John Arciero, my good friend. He's a classical bodybuilder who's uh, aligned with aesthetics. And um, his Instagram is, and if you don't follow him, follow him now, <laughs> Golden Age underscore John. That's, you got it, J-O-H-N. Yes, yeah. Golden Age underscore John. And follow his fitness journey, see how he's doing, you know, get some advice. Send him a DM, bother <laughs> him, I don't know, see his app pics, jack off, whatever you want to do. But um, sayonara, any, motherfuckers. Any attention is good attention. All right, peace. And they're all like, when's the bodybuilding phase going to end? Right. Okay. So they'll say stuff like that. So prior to that, I was I was a performing magician for like six years in high school. That's crazy. <laughs> so I was doing that and uh, I'm a little out of practice. Like I haven't done anything really recently, but that was my bodybuilding. I It's what I lived and breathed was magic. And I, yeah. would, and I would do it around school and, and stuff and I, I would do shows and stuff. Did what, what was the mindset behind that? Like what, what made you go into magic? For me, seeing, uh, well, I saw a magician on TV who, who levitated a woman and basically he did what's known as in magic, the Azra levitation, A-Z-R-A-H or something. Yeah. And it's a levitation where she, the woman levitates, she's perpendicular and then she's covered with a blanket Yeah. and then is disappeared, is vanished. Yeah. And it's just like a two in one crazy freaking illusion. Yeah. So I, I saw that and I was like, you know, magic is one of those things that people see, but they don't know, like, they see it on the surface level as, like, kids' entertainment, as just hokey little tricks, but it could be more. And that's yeah. kind of like what bodybuilding, too. Yeah. Right? So I, I was like, man, like, there's these veiny freaks, but it could be something real here. It could be something more. It could be an art. Yeah. It could be a, 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 a fashion statement. It could be a you know, a, a, a physical endeavor as well as a, a creative endeavor. There's so much it could be. And I, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at spotting the gem in, among a weird interest. 
and I'll like, and I'll yeah, be like yeah. I'll be like this is a weird interest overall, but there's some there's a little something in there that's so cool, yeah, and so vi- like you know it transcends. It's like, it's and, like that that a one degree of deviation from the norm, yes. just one, just just enough to like yeah make it happen. Yeah, it's it's that one little gem in the in the turd, you know <laughs> of 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 what bodybuilding is yeah. to the most part. Um, so you, so you did magic, um, and then what else? Like, uh, well, I was making short films for a little while when I was a kid, like from 12 to like 15, maybe yeah. I, I was just making movies like all the time with my buddies. They all sucked, but I loved editing and I still love editing so much. I could edit in front of a computer all day long, yeah. playing around with ha- different images and different music. So that's actually something I'm excited for with this YouTube channel yeah. coming up. Uh, is is the editing aspect of it um yeah so so f- it's basically been film uh magic uh and then there's other little things i've done in there like getting into meditation and yeah and um uh, yeah that's that's pre- as far as creative stuff photography yeah. a little bit of modeling so i feel so it's a, it's a pretty well-rounded image i think about it like this <clears throat> so um when I first uh, dabbled with the idea of creativity, I mm-hmm. was already like a, a pretty solid artist. I mean, I used to draw a lot as a kid, and then over some over some time, I became a writer. Mm-hmm. I was, and then I started doing poetry. Then I started uh, watching films. Mm-hmm. Then I started writing again. Then I started playing music. Then I started singing. Mm-hmm. Then I started, you know, consuming information. Then I started getting into self help, personal mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. Then I started. Uh, you know, speaking better. Mm-hmm. Then I started doing other things like meditation. And I feel like all of these little activities that we just do as hobbies, we don't put much mind into it, Exactly, right? yeah. But but in the overall, they add to the person itself. Because I think about it like this, like even education for that matter. Mm-hmm. I'm an advertising major at BU. Mm-hmm. I can just ground myself in that. But mm-hmm. I refuse to do that. Yeah. Because I feel like I can add so much more. I can look at one thing from multiple perspectives. I can study psychology, do that, mm-hmm. right? Then I'm like, okay, what if I study economics? I can understand the money of it. Mm-hmm. And then how do I just get into people's heads by having those conversations, right? Mm-hmm. And it's I feel like it's all those mundane activities that we do day to day, which actually accentuate our main passion. Right. So for most people, going to the gym is just a mundane thing you do every day. Yeah. But s- some of us are weird enough to like make that into like a huge thing. 100%. Go- going to the gym, you yeah. know, building muscle. Um, but it's like you said, so all these different tangential interests, there doesn't appear on the surface to be a connection with some of them. Yeah. Right. But if you look at the whole story, it makes sense looking back. Absolutely. Why I went from here to there to there. Oh, because I found out about this Yeah. and it resonates with this, which is something I really, that's part of me, you know? So, yeah, I, I see it like, uh, one of the Da Vinci principles, there's seven is, is. Cornesion, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's basically the ability to make connections from seemingly distinct fields. Mm -hmm. Art, science, Mm -hmm. logic, creativity. I like that. Math, painting. Mm -hmm. And then fuse it all together to make something. Because Da Vinci was basically an architect, a party planner, an artist, a mathematician. Party planner. He was. <laughs> like he was. plan weddings and stuff? Yeah, like, like he used to plan fabulous parties. And That's it's, awesome. It's because of, of the, the fields of experience from which you could borrow from, it just actually engineered his art mm-hmm. um, with the Vitruvian man already. And then, right. And then he made the first flying machine. All of that, I think, is, is great. And I, especially I see it now, like I talk to a lot of my friends and people I meet, uh, the general consensus is, oh, I do one thing and yeah. I do that good. And that's that's there's no problem in that. You yeah. can be exceptionally good in one thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's always helpful. Like you said, your bodybuilding is your hobby. You're passionate about it, but it's not something that defines it's you. Not my whole life, by yeah. any means. <laughs> but your whole life exists on those other tangents, and then yes. it accentuates that thing that Definitely. people see. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Well, I I think with bodybuilding, I, I don't know if you wanted to wrap up. Can no, I uh, go, ahead, go ahead. All go right. ahead. Yeah. So uh, with bodybuilding, there there's an interesting crowd you get because what it is is. So, it's it's an athlete, it's an athletic endeavor in the sense that you're using your body yeah. but it's an artistic endeavor as well with the presentation and the posing and the attention to detail right and stuff like that so that's two separate realms that on the surface don't seem like they mesh right. creativity and uh, just brute athleticism yeah right yeah but I think and that was something I kind of struggled with, with for a little while I'm like 
I'm, I'm a really kind of cerebral person. I, I feel really creative. And, but do I want to be like an athlete? Do I want to do like bodybuilding? Yeah. Like, do I want to be a fitness <laughs> model? But I'm also creative. How do you, so, it's it's like, so you balance that you, you're trying to like find which identity comes up or if they fuse together or not. Well, that's, that's why classic bodybuilding appealed to me. That makes sense. Is because, yeah. 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 Because nowadays it's not, it's not as focused on the yeah. art. It's not as focused on the beauty and the attention to detail. It's just focused on as much muscle mass, as much steroids, as much whatever, more, 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 you know? But back in the day, there was like a fineness to it. There's like a fine art to it. There's the yeah. athleticism and the art to it. I love that. The photography, the posing, the, the yeah, all that. Yeah. It's, it's like a whole realm of creativity, which can only be accessed by those who see it. Yeah. It, it really is. It, and, and to those who don't see it, it's just weird. <laughs> yeah, 100%. It's like, it's like even, even I think uh, creativity in that sense exists in um, like when, when a couple of economists meet and they discuss like those terms and within those terms, they put out different tangents and then yeah. they use that. I think it's crazy. But like, but, but that's again, that's not an accessible field. And, and mm-hmm. I think bodybuilding is more accessible. So I'm really interested to see how you... How you feel, how you foster that creativity while still holding on to the right. right side of your brain. Right, exactly. It's it's a right brain, left brain thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. All right, man. Thank you. This was amazing. <laughs> Thank I'm, you so I'm much. So glad dude. you were my first guest. That was a great conversation there. I man. know. I loved I, it. I, I loved it, dude. It was. I mean, I we're had just, like, we're just I, vibing. I know. I had a set of questions, but I was like, "Fuck it." I was gonna look at my phone, but I was like, "Yeah, I don't need it." It's a good sign. Yeah. Is yeah. it still recording? Okay, okay, yeah. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is the Vitruvian Man podcast where we bring in the best human minds. <laughs> um, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> where, we, where we bring in uh, people who are just killing it um, in arts, sciences, and basically follow the dimension model for perfection. Um, this was John Arciero, my good friend. He's a classical bodybuilder who's uh, aligned with aesthetics and... Um, his Instagram is, and if you don't follow him, follow him now, <laughs> Golden Age underscore John. That's, you got it, J O H N. Yes, yeah. Golden Age underscore John, and follow his fitness journey, see how he's doing, you know, get some advice, send him a DM, <laughs> bother him, I don't know, see his app pics, jack off, whatever you want to do, but uh, sayonara, any, motherfuckers. Any attention is good attention.